YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy, Buddha, back in the building for a video I've been wanting to make for a minute and one that I think is going to help a lot of new players out and maybe even some long-term players, some existing players uh, like myself. I'm not quite your longest-term player, but I've been around for about six months now, and I learned a thing or two researching while coming up with the talking points of what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, but specifically today, we are going over tours, something that's kind of confusing. Uh, if you don't break it down and if you're not super detail-oriented like myself, there are a lot of nuances to tours uh, that if you don't do, your progression in them is going to take a very, very long time. Time. So I wanted to not only research this for myself, but compile and make a video covering uh, the details surrounding tours to help you progress through them if you are wondering how these work exactly, uh, because they do yield you a very specific resource that I want to point out later, and it's in your best interest to try and speed up your progression in this area of Las Claudia uh, and there's no better way to do that than understanding what exactly to do to take those steps of progression. Shout out to LD Player, by the way, if you see my mouse uh, hovering on the screen. They are the ones that uh, reached out to me to sponsor uh, a way to allow you to play your phone games on the PC. That is how we are emulating Last Claudia right now. Uh, it's a great way to work on Last Claudia, do things like auto farming, uh, just menu navigation. Nothing too crazy because the frame rates are definitely not friendly on your emulators. Uh, but for certain things, LD Player is a great place to allow you to play LC on your computer. Follow my link in the description below. Uh, it's a free way and easy way to support me if you are looking for a solution in that area. Uh, I would appreciate it a ton. All you got to do is download it, play it the day after, and it helps get your boy Buddha some guap. Let's move over to the World Wide Web and start by giving the biggest shout out to Captain Jabberwock, you can see his tag right there. Uh, so I started on a mission to make an LC tours guide on my own, kind of researching here and there. And Demos and a couple of the other members on Discord pointed out to me, yo, Captain Jabberwock has a guide already. Crypt, I think, and Tweaks were the other two to tell me about it. And I've mentioned him a bunch of times. He's one of the most active data miners and one of the goats of the community right now. Uh, so Biggest shout out to Captain Jabberwock. Thank you for all the time and effort you put in completely for free, right? These people are donating their time to uh, just enhance our experience in playing this game. And I figure why come up with a general slow twitch brain Buddha guide when I can just plagiarize? <laughs> just kidding. But I can reference this guide, put the link to it in the description because it's very detailed. It helped me learn a ton and we're going to get into exactly what points you want to consider when you are focusing on your tours in Las Claudia. Uh, so let's just go down this and I'll try and cross reference in the game and here by showing you. Uh, we start off with this image here. You can see it's a little confusing. We've got a photo with a lot of things on it right now, a lot of lines and circles and numbers trying to point specific things out. Uh, so let's start by going back in game and going into the tours section like we just were. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of the tours that is available for me to run, this first one here. And we can see that I am on the Garagia Mountains, right? I've completed the previous two tours here. There are missions. Uh, you can see I'm at 90%. Each mission you complete increases the tour by 10% as far as I'm aware. Uh, I don't think there's any more than 10 missions per tour area, uh, each one yielding you a different re reward for that completion mission. And at the 100%, you get whatever piece of gear. They specifically give out equipment for completing these tours mission areas. Uh, there are also drops that you get. We'll talk about that more later. Each different area. But what I want to point out is mainly here. Suitability is going to be your main point of interest regarding tours and completing your missions. Uh, because if we take a look and hit click OK, 
you can see suitability on and off right there. Uh, this is actually showing us why they have the suitabilities that they do. Uh, but you can see that each character at the moment has two suitability each, uh, which increases our great success and grand success rate. If I go ahead and take off Dora right here, you can see we lost the two suitability, which dropped this down to 18% and 5%. I believe if we look at the math, so let's start by just knowing what suitabilities are. If we look at the base, right? If I ran this tour with zero units, zero arcs, uh, basically a zero suitability, you can see we have 10% at a great success rate uh, and 1% at a grand success. Uh, let's say I take a character and add one suitability to the board. It increases our great success chance by 2% and grand success rate by 1%. So each suitability yields you the 2% great and 1% grand. The reason these suitabilities are important are because of the missions. If we take a look at the mission I'm currently on right now, you can see that for this final one, I want to grandly succeed at three tours, right? So. Right now, my grand success rate is 8%. I'm barely ever seeing this proc at that 8%, which is why this is honestly taking me forever. But there are ways that I can increase this even further. Uh, so now that we know that uh, suitabilities increase these success rates, we can look at this suitability section that it informs us about. Uh, when it's showing us the type, this is sniper, this is beast. When it shows us equipable units, uh, this is the hammer weapon and resistances 30 elemental resistance to thunder nil to illness and nil to blind so any units that fulfill those requirements are going to give you one suitability per fulfillment if we go back to captain jabberwock's page you can you can see that that's what he's pointing out here uh, just like i said the beast is your one the sniper is two the equivalent of units is three uh, and the resistances are five or four through six. In this image, Luger has all six of these requirements checked off. So you can see uh, that he points out why each one is applicable and it gives him a total suit suitability of six. Now, if we look at mine, you can see that mine is only given us a two suitability. Uh, and you might be wondering, why is that? Well, that's because you can actually manipulate those uh, stats with equipment and skills that is separate of your regular PvE and PvP builds. So you don't have to build and then keep certain skills and equipments on a unit for general use in order to fulfill the needs of your tours. It is considered a separate build. I just realized that I'm over here talking about Dora when actually in the example, I want Luger, who I do have right here. He naturally does have the sniper class and a hammer equip available. That's what gives him that edge. Let's take a look and see what we might be able to manipulate to get his suitability up. He is weak to blind. Uh, he's resistance to illness. So if we can give him one more stack of resistance, that'll give him something. And if we can give him 20 extra to his thunder resistance, that'll give us another suitability. So let's try and shoot for a suitability of four. So I did actually switch it up because I didn't have any accessory that gave 20 extra thunder resistance. Uh, but I was able to find researcher's attire, which gives us the nil already in illness that we need. And here you can see my two accessories I have on him are two sets of 10 extra thunder resistance. If we hit confirm, we should see Luger now has four suitability on him and he checks off those four icons. So that gives you an idea of how to manipulate these characters to help their suitabilities go up. That has pushed us up now. We're at an eight total suitability, giving us 30% at a great success rate and 12% at a grand success rate, bettering my chances at said uh, achievement right here. I believe we can also try and give him an arc maybe to fulfill the beast uh, role that we need. So Blaze Garden doesn't actually give Mimicry Beast to the uh, wearer of the arc, but it does have the skill as the first teachable one. So if we were to teach Luger this skill right here, we could then equip it to him, uh, giving us another suitability, pushing us up to five and obviously 
via Jabberwock's example, Luger can get up to a suitability of six in total, but I'm fine rocking this. We'll go ahead and send these guys off to the tour uh, to hopefully get us something that we need and activate that 12% chance for a grand success. Now, obviously it's in my best interest to then go through each of these tour tabs and customize it to increase that grand suitability rate in order to achieve that mission. But there are also missions that we can look at back over on Jabberwock's guide that require certain specifications. Uh, if we're looking at the first tour that you need to complete, uh, Brana Plains, one of the missions, the third mission right here, succeed at three tours with 20 plus earth resistance. If you don't have a unit that has 20 plus earth resistance built in it naturally, be on the lookout for accessories that can increase these units certain specs in order to fulfill these tours. I'm not going to go through each tour right here and explain exactly how to finish all the missions because this link will be in the description. You can see exactly what you're going to need for each tour and certain details like how long the tours uh, take to complete. It does change from eight hours to 12 hours once you get to the Garagia Mountains, which is the third tour area that uh, I'm at currently. There's also the Ice Caverns after that. And there are two more listed here with data mined information on how to, uh, how to complete them. Uh, but if we look in game, it seems that it says these two areas are opening soon. I know there were a couple tours that were collab event only, so I don't know if these are the placeholders for those. Uh, but weirdly enough, I don't think these are available. Any of the veterans who have completed the ice caverns already can confirm that. Uh, for me in the comments below, but it looks like we're only able to go up to the ice caverns I don't know how long it's been since they have released a tour uh, Update, but they should get on that they should get on that because that's that's not a good look if these have been here for months and months and months <laughs> The equipment you can get from these tours after completing 100% of the missions, uh, there's nothing that has stood out to me as of yet. Right now, I'm chasing this armor right here, the less HP the unit has, the more defense and mind. Seems like it's okay. Defense plus 122, not the greatest. It doesn't come with any HP stat or mind stat, which is highly desired if you are equipping armor, but it does have this kind of quirky effect that does seem like it could be maybe useful. Uh, but by the time you're at this tour and trying to complete these missions, as you can see, I'm not even done with it. And I've got armor that I would already use, especially there are certain Arc Aether rewards that have armor slots that would be much better than this. So it's not that you're chasing the uh, rewards that you get for the completion missions, but what I will say is extremely important and why you do want to try and focus a little bit of effort on completing these tours, at least the first two nodes, is so you can get to the Garagia Mountains because upon clearing these tours in this area and beyond, I saved this completion right here so that we could hopefully see uh, when I complete the tour that this is the only infinite grind for your weapon and armor shards, right? A lot. Some people have asked me, how do I get weapon and armor shards for the alchemy shop? Uh, let's go take a look at exactly what I'm talking about. You can see that this mission actually does give us five of the rare uh, weapon shards right there. This is specifically important for the alchemy lab and as i've said before in previous videos more of an end game mechanic right here because it requ does require a lot more resources than just the shards to actually upgrade your equipment but this is where you go if you go to enhance equipment there's a list of weapons there's a list of armors no accessories yet i don't understand but and then sometimes there are limited but the only two we're concerned with are your weapons and your armors, right? Right here, you can see for the armor, you need armor shards and weapons, you need weapon shards. Once you start progressing them further, uh, you will need those uh, kind of blue lit versions of this item, which are the rare versions of it. And to my knowledge, unless they are, unless Adis is running, the event that is up uh, right now, so you can take advantage of this whenever you want, if you want to spend your orange orbs, event orbs on it, which I don't typically recommend, but the gear upgrade field is another way. You can only do it three times a day though. 
But other than that, tours are your only way to uh, infinitely farm those items. Granted, not a lot. You're not getting a ton of them incoming per day. I've only upgraded a handful of weapons uh, via the normal enhancement in the alchemy tab. Uh, let's see, I've done the Heaven's Cry up to plus 40, uh, which is useful, right? They have some really good weapons. I haven't done any of the claws. I know doing Vena Cleave and uh, this one right here, Magna, these two claws are very, very nice when they're upgraded by plus 40. This I did to plus 40 Star Sword Lometis. Not great. I don't recommend doing this one right here, but it was just when I was first trying it out, this was the first item I started and I wanted to get it to plus 40 for OCD's sake. Uh, but other than that, right, enhancing your equipment is very late game. It's very end game stuff because not only does it require the shards, which accumulate over time and not quickly, it does require enhancement material as well as you may have noticed right like all of these materials are needed for enhancing your character so using them to give you a plus 40 buff to the equipment is very negligible compared to using those resources to enhance your units that you actually want to use <laughs> to the potential of level 100. Uh, specifically, if we go down to the claws, right, I haven't started on those because they do require resources that I just don't quite have enough of. Dragon Eyes, uh, I do have over 200 because of the last multiplayer grind. Well, actually, no, the Jalabanga, the first ever multiplayer grind, yielded us a lot of five-star enhancement materials, which boosted me up in there. But for example, like here, the God Sealing Stone, I'm running low on. There's like, I think you need, if, if it's two per, I believe this amount does go up as you continue to enhance. Uh, so uh, that's just what I wanted to point out to say that enhancing alchemy is definitely later game after you've built out units You're done with your enhancing then you can start focusing those mats for your enhancing of equipment uh, But that's getting a little off topic the point of this is to highlight that tours are the only Infinite farm to produce the weapon and armor shards that you need as well to upgrade those equipment oh Okay, I think that's about all I wanted to cover. Uh, let's go over to the website again. Like I said, there are extra details in here. Don't forget, like I said, uh, tours are entirely separate from your PvE and PvP parties. So just because you're using a certain setup in, in your PvE or general case, it's not going to affect your tours and vice versa. There are extra details per area, right? Like this first one, uh, Jabberwock puts a ton of extra notes to keep in mind that are gonna help you achieve your missions that you can find just below right there. Uh, obviously, it's going to depend on what you have on your account, but it's good to know that if you do have something that will increase your chances and it will increase your rate of progressing through this tours, uh, it's good to know that ahead of time so you can take advantage of it. But that'll about do it for the extra details for the tours lesson, tours explained in Last Claudia, how to better, how to up your game in that area and understand it just a bit more. Uh, I hope it gave you some clarification. I'm going to try and cut and edit this so it's a little more concise. There were a couple tangents I went off on. But again, huge shout out to Captain Jabberwock for creating this guide and actually teaching me and helping me explain this a little more. Like I said, the link for this will be in the description. You can access it there. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped you. And that's all I got for you this time. So, y'all know what we say. Work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.